All right, it's time for ABC's TGIF lineup. Students, we have some very exciting news this morning. One of our young men, Theodore Cleaver, is going to appear on television. You mean we're on the show? I'm going to the videotape. Hey, wait, the kids are on television. Now I'll tell you once more, stop trying to act so grown up. How can I learn about life when I'm surrounded with kid stuff? Those damn kids. You ready, my young barbarians? Wow. You're pretty high and far out, aren't you? What kind of kick are you on, son? Kids, what do they know about life? Do you ever feel like you don't fit in? Why? What's the matter? I'm very worried about Beaver. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is my life and it's my decision. Parents just don't understand our generation. What, are you crazy? Cut that out. Where's your sense of humor, man? Do you think maybe there's something wrong with us? We're the now generation, remember? Wow. Ah, talk about a generation gap. This is it! <laughs> Look at them, so happy with their insipid little teenage pursuit. This is going so fast. We're just talking about it. Wait till you get to the real thing. Do you have any idea how much damage 10 million teenagers can do to this country? Hey, if I could understand teenagers, I wouldn't get my mailbox knocked over every week. Teenagers. Both the word and the attitude seem like they've been around forever. But there wasn't even a word teenager until the 1940s. In the decades before, most kids that age were expected to work for a living. Unless they were lucky or rich, most teenagers didn't even go to high school. I guess you could say things have changed a little since then. There was something else that came on the scene in America just about the same time that teenagers did. Television. And almost from the beginning, teenagers had been one of its favorite subjects. I'm Melissa Joan Hart, and tonight the Museum of Television and Radio is going to show you 50 years of teenagers on television. No matter how much things have changed in that time, I think you'll also see how much they've stayed the same. Whether you're Ricky Nelson, Richie Cunningham, or even a teenage witch, the basic issues of being a teenager are still pretty similar. Fights with parents, dating, peer pressure, rebellion. And for 50 years, television has been there to explore them. Tonight, from the 50s of Father Knows Best to the 90s of Boy Meets World, we'll see how teens and their parents still have the same ups and downs. I'm so lucky to have a mother as sweet as you. Lately, I can't even look at my mother without wanting to stab her repeatedly. Don't talk to me like that. Don't worry, I won't be talking to you. I won't be talking to you either. Fine. With other fine. Fine, 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 fine. fine. <laughs> we'll see how high school is still the main social scene for teenagers. Friends and rivals, insiders and outsiders, good times and bad behavior. We'll look at dating. From wholesome and harmless to hot and heavy. And see how the whole experience can be just as confusing as ever. Boy, James. Well, you know how girls are. Well, no, how are they? Why do boys always think their problems are more important than ours? That's because the women of today haven't met the man of tomorrow. Uh, you try girls if you want to. Me, I'm sticking to jazz. We'll look at teen sex and see how it's gone from something you once couldn't even talk about to today's typical television conflict. Mm, quit it! I don't open that wide at the dentist. Through it all, we'll see a television landscape that has changed as the country has changed. Always looking for new ways to depict the lives of new generations of teenagers. I hereby propose that the West Beverly Hills Board of Education move to consider adopting a plan to make condoms available to the students on the campus of West Beverly High. I think you're rushing things a little. The world is going to change because it has to change. And whether you like it or not, the kids are the ones who are going to change it. But how did all this get started? I guess it was, like, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> we forget. It was the late 1940s and the beginning of television. America was celebrating the end of World War II, a booming economy, and discovering an unruly new class of citizens that, before the war, it had barely noticed, the teenager. <laughs> Now, for the first time, it was normal for teenagers to go to high school. And these kids had their own ideas about what a normal teenager's life should be. Hot rods, sock hops, and being popular. 
But in the late 40s television, teenagers still didn't have much of a place. Just about the only programming for teenagers were shows like Your Hit Parade, which used studio singers to review the top seven tunes of the week. This broadcast is from the 50s, but, well, you get the idea. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. By the time Ricky Nelson became television's first teen idol, teenagers suddenly were everywhere in the new medium. You're a teenager now, you know. Yes, sir. For 50 years, television has been one of the places teenagers have found role models and heartthrobs, voices that express their feelings, and images of who they might become. Does that mean that these are the best years of our lives? I hope not. Over the years, television has given us a lot of different images of what it means to be a teenager. But one thing all these television teens had in common is conflict with their parents. You, you adults! <laughs> she said adults like it was a dirty word. When we come back, teenagers in the parent zone. Tell us about the stud we're going to be meeting tonight. Mother, you're not going to meet him. Well, we're going to be at the bowling alley, and Chip's going to be at the bowling alley. We're bound to run into one another. Please don't embarrass me. Please. Oh, honey, there's no way we'd embarrass you. Pretend you're not my parents. <laughs> a lot of teens may have shared that wish over the years. And probably plenty of parents, too. You put parents and teenagers in the same room, and there's bound to be conflicts. They say that's normal. All through childhood, the parents set the boundaries. Now it's time for the teenagers to test them. Dad, get off my back! What? You're on top of me every second telling me how to run my life. Do this. Don't do that. The issue here is my right to live my own life without having you try and control it. I am in high school, Mom. I need somebody to take care of me, to listen to my problems. Dad, you don't understand. You don't understand, Mom. Just... When are you going to realize that I'm a person, an individual, a human being? The conflict between teens and their parents has always been a staple of television. The 50s established the image of a parent as a kind of good-natured referee, helping their teens work out their problems and learn little life lessons along the way. Mom, I'm trying to play this symphony record when Jazz Bowl here comes in and starts playing something by Hammerhead Higgins. Hammerhand. Now, how do you know you won't like these records of Ricky's if you haven't listened to them? For instance, that record he's got right there, what's it called? I ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. Mambo. <laughs> Molly, I told you last week that it was ridiculous for a boy your age to start shaving before he even had a beard. Now, I'll tell you once more, stop trying to act so grown up. But even on Father Knows Best, there were occasional moments of rebellion. Oh, Ward suggested we go to the Saturday night dance together. Good, that'd be wonderful. What Saturday night dance? The big convention shindig. Oh, by the way, you're going too. I am? Yes, I fixed up a date for you with the Mawson boy. Carter, I think his name is. You did what? Well, the poor kid doesn't know a soul in town, so I thought this would be nice. Oh, you thought it'd be nice. Did you ever think what I might think? Well, Betty, what's the matter? Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Father, what age do you think we're living in? Girls are no longer put on an auction block and sold like livestock. Even Donna Reed, maybe the sweetest of the sweet television moms, with the right provocation, could turn into Mommy Dearest. Mary, upstairs this minute. And Jeff, get out there and get to work on that backyard right now. Well, of course, I don't believe in screaming. A rubber hose is just as effective, and it doesn't leave any marks. <laughs> Still, almost anything that went wrong could be straightened out by an apology and a little lecture from Dad. You know, Wally, shaving is just one of the outward signs of being a man. It's a whole lot more important to try to be a man inside first. A man should be willing to admit when he's wrong. I'm just trying to help you guys be broad-minded enough to see both sides of this darn thing. Take the initiative. Be a leader. Why does everybody have to be a leader? Why can't a guy just be a happy slob? In this kind of television household, and there are plenty still like it today, by the end of the episode, everyone was wiser and happier and still one big loving family. Wait a minute, just because I, I relented, that doesn't mean that we're all going back to our slovenly ways. You understand that? 
Yes, Mother. Sure thing, Mom. Shut up! <sighs> this is why some animals eat their young. <laughs> Not all television families are quite the same. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God! What happened then? Well, so, why do you have to pick on everything I do? Darling, all I want is a few little things, a few little pleasures, a few little crutches to help me get through life, darling. Get through? Mum, you've absolved yourself of responsibility. You live from self-induced crisis to self-induced crisis. Someone does your hair, someone chooses what you wear, someone does your brain, someone tells you what to eat, and three times a week, someone sticks a hose up your bum and flushes oh. it all out of you. Throw all that coffee away. You might say that a few things coffee. have changed. It started in the 70s, when television began to catch up with the things that had shaken up the country the decade before. Oh, wow! <laughs> There was a new kind of American family of single parents, remarried parents, and patched together families. Like the Brady Bunch. Kids, what do they know about life? <laughs> Going steady's one thing, but wearing false eyelashes is out. Out? A lot of girls my age wear makeup. Well, I'm sorry, that's their mother's problem, not mine. Now off they come. Ouch! <laughs> Like Harvey says, parents just don't understand our generation. Marsha, I understand it better than you think. Well, I've already lived through your generation. But things have changed since you were my age. Only times have changed, sweetheart. People haven't. But things had changed. A more permissive society allowed for a different attitude both in parents and their teens. Both sides saw that roles were changing. That's not the point, Dad. What is the point, James? The point is that, well, whether you two trust me or not. Of course we trust you. You know that we trust you. It's just that you're only 15 years old. You haven't had all the experience in the world. That's the point. You're not a little kid anymore, but you're not a grown-up person either, James. Well, I'm not asking to ship out on a freighter or to, or to get married. I just want to choose my own friends. All right, James. Do your own thing. Ah. But do it carefully. Let me tell you something. You know how I feel and how your mother feels about drugs. Now, as long as you're living in this house, you are not to do any drugs. When you move into your own house, you are not to do any drugs. <laughs> when I am dead and you're 75, you are not to do any drugs. Well, how do I look? Middle-aged. <laughs> Dad, recent studies show you can predict success by the way a person dresses. Alex, you're a young man. You shouldn't be worried about success. You should be thinking about hopping on a tramp steamer and going around the world or putting a pack on your back and heading down to Mexico or South America, anywhere. The 60s are over, Dad. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> Some television teens were forced to take over the parenting of their own dysfunctional parents. Kelly, get out of here! Did you dump this? No. I demand an explanation. You said that you stopped. Don't you tell me what I should or should not be doing. I am a grown woman, and I will not have my 16-year-old daughter play cop in my own house. Mom, I think you should call your sponsor. Oh, well, thanks for the advice, little Miss A.A. I was just trying to help. Then please just do those three tiny favors for me so I can rest up and be my gracious, witty self for all of your friends at the luncheon tomorrow. How many other mothers volunteer their time like I do? By the 90s, we even saw some television households where teens were forced to get along without parents at all. Hey, what happened to our rule no going out on school nights? Go to hell, Charlie. Lights out time, Claudia. Come on. No way. I never go to bed this early. Billy. Starting tonight. Forget it. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, yes, I can. Read the guardianship agreement. Oh, would you shut up with that already, Charlie? A piece of paper does not make you a parent. So where have we ended up today? Mixed up households, rearranged families, 
and yet still plenty of the same kind of 50-style nuclear families we've always had. As well as the same issue, parents and teenagers who are still trying to figure out how to get along. Wait, don't tell me. There's something different. I would never dye my hair red. It's not red. It's crimson glow. Oh. Well, I could see it now. The social whirl, wild parties, Axl Rose. Oh, what am I supposed to say? Nothing. I mean, it's her hair. Ex exactly. And we'll always be able to spot you in a crowd. I got a haircut. With what, a weed whacker? Yeah. <laughs> what is this thing? It's a ponytail. Why did you do that to yourself? Well, I, I went to the barbershop, I saw the picture, and I thought it looked cool. You look like an idiot. I don't, wait, I don't understand none of your other friends have haircuts like this. Well, I mean, you're the one that's always telling me not to be like my friends. I mean, if all my friends jumped in a lake, would you want me to? <laughs> if they're like this, I'd ask you to join in. One thing hasn't changed. Sometimes, when a teenager needs to sort it all out, is a place of their own and to be left alone. I come bearing ice cream. It's cookie dough. You can eat it right out of the carton. Mom, if you care about me at all, do not attempt to cheer me up, because it's not possible. You can leave the ice cream. Okay. There's a world where I can go and tell my secrets to in my room. In my room. How can I learn about life when I'm surrounded with kid stuff? Are you in here someplace? <laughs> so what are you saying, Dad? I'm saying wear your hair however you want it. So you're really okay with it? I'm, I'm okay with it. Well, then why'd you get so crazy about it in the first place? Because I didn't like what I saw when I first walked in the house. Well, didn't you ever get a haircut that your parents didn't really like? Hey! <laughs> I wanted to, but, um... They wouldn't let me. At your age, I would have killed to look like Ringo. Who? <laughs> Ringo. Fab Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Big changes happen at home when kids become teenagers. Even bigger ones happen at school. When we come back, high school. While we continue our discussion of cults, can anyone give me another example of a group using coercive techniques such as peer pressure, chanting, and social isolation to achieve control over its members? Brittany. Cheerleading? She'll never have to worry about mind control. No, but she'll have to watch out for ferrets building a nest in her head. This is it, high school. What happens to us now will determine our entire futures. <laughs> For four years, it's the center of a teenager's world, high school. And over the years, it's been the perfect setting for television to look at the social life of teenagers. Clothes, dating, popularity, peer pressure, the struggle to fit in. It's where a teenager makes the big change from kid to adult. Look, it can be a great time of new friends and new things, or a time when you'd rather just hide from it all. Now. Okay, I'm going to read the themes. Now raise your hands to vote. We have graduation, final friends. My parents keep asking how school was. It's like saying, how is that drive-by shooting? You don't care how it was. You're lucky to get out alive. When some loud bragger tries to put me down and says this school is great, 
I tell him right away, now what's the matter, buddy? Ain't you heard of my school? It's number one in the state. Education may be important, but how you rate is the real issue for most teenagers. And one of the nightmares can be the first day. My side burns on straight. Oh, what are you worried about? Look, it's just a school. There's the lockers, there's a class. And a kid in his underwear. <laughs> they took my clothes. Who? The seniors. Seniors took my clothes. Why? Just because I'm a new guy. Uh, well, I'm a new guy. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> Listen, I'd, I'd like you to meet my sister, Marcia. This is Tom Peterson and Dick Corsett. Hi. Hi. Uh, Marcia's just starting here this term. Uh, it's so beneficial for me to be away from those children in junior high and to be with people of my own, uh, uh, mature growth. Not everyone is as friendly as you might hope. What'd I do? You were almost in my way. Some people, on the other hand, may be very friendly. Hello? Hi, is Tyler? No. Hello? Hey, you busy? No. <laughs> Turn around. Personal appearance is a big part of fitting in. How you look, how you act, or how you dress. <laughs> Hi. I just saw Chris Fennell in the hall. He has his sleeves rolled up today. Ooh. <laughs> Vanessa, that color's hot on you. Thanks. I have some blue eyeshadow that would look great with that. OK, let me see. You know, with the little makeup, we almost look 15. 16. 16 and a half. <laughs> so we were just discussing Freddy's new nose. What do you think? Very nice. Nice. It's a masterpiece. I mean, it will be when the swelling goes down. Dr. Hoftetter is a genius. He's gonna do my lips next. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think they're fine now. <laughs> you're kidding, right? How can you be all that you can be if you're not willing to look like someone else? You know what I mean? LD, you should, like, let me do your hair sometime, you know? I'm like this dynamite beautician. Yeah? Yeah. Can you do cornrows? No, but I do a fabulous streak at tip. Girl. Like, gross me out the door. No wonder she's so popular. All of this concern about how you look is still really about the same thing. Popularity. Vote for Jan Brady. Be sure to vote for Jan Brady. Jan Brady for most popular girl. Vote for Jan Brady. Be sure I'm flunking algebra and I need help. You've got it. My brother Greg is a whiz at algebra. He'll give you all the help you need. Gee, thanks. That'd be super. No problem. Just remember, Jan Brady for most popular girl. You've got my vote. It's great to be popular, but that's usually just a small group of lucky kids. Most of the rest are left somewhere in between or are left on the outside looking in. Seventeen, their love was meant for beauty queens in high school girls with clear skin smiles who married young and then retired. The Valentines I never knew, the Friday night charades of youth were spent on one more beautiful. At 17, I learned the truth. You ever feel like you don't fit in? Only all the time, but I don't want to fit in. I researched it, and awkward people tend to be much more successful later in life. Is that how you see yourselves as lamos? Well, Haley, let's face it. If a guy landed from Mars and said, what's a nerd, they'd bring him to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm smart and funny looking. It's a deadly combination. <laughs> Look at them. So happy with their insipid little teenage pursuits. Girls, parties, rock and roll. 
Well, I don't need any of that stuff. I've got me. And that's all I need. The world was younger than today. And dreams were all they gave for free. To ugly duckling girls like me. <laughs> What's going on? Take a look at my locker. Being an outsider can be tough. Being labeled can be worse. I want to know if by putting me down, it makes you all feel like men. I want to know if writing fag on my locker is your standard for real guts. What's gotten into him? Nothing that wasn't there before. Television has shown the role understanding teachers can play in helping confused teens find their way through a difficult time. If I got a job, I could probably take classes at night, couldn't I? I hope you do. I don't mean to push you or anything, but I think you have an awful lot of potential. You can push. I don't mind. <clears throat> I'll see you later. Hi, you must be Mike. I would like to apologize on behalf of my class, but grading on a curve, I think that they gave you a rather warm welcome. They threw heavy objects at me. <laughs> Mike? Let go of me. Hey, cut the tough guy act, huh? Nobody's buying tickets. You have a problem reading, don't you? I can read. I've been teaching a long time. I ask you to read something, you kick over a chair. I know a diversionary tactic when I see it. Your problem is not unique. There are ways to help you. S say I, I do have trouble. Do something for me. Copy what I've written right underneath it. Before. I want to see what you see. On the other hand, there may be some troubled teens no understanding teacher can help. Bemis! Ah! Damn it, you will listen when I'm talking! No way! I'm sick of school! And I'm sick of you! What the? Yeah. You get the hell out of here! I'll see you in detention! Okay, cool. I'm gonna go get some chicks and some nachos. The hunger for chicks and nachos may be one way of putting it. But it is, after all, one of the biggest steps of growing up the mating dance. Come. But before you go to the dance, you've got to be invited. Are you uh, going to the school dance? No, are you? Well. I have fundamental ideological problems with teenage social rituals that basically do nothing but exacerbate fears of total insecurity and inferiority over one's appearance while frenetically exploiting, and I must hasten to add, distorting the feminine ideal. I mean, an act which reaches its apogee with the election of the Spring Queen. Was that a yes or a no? When we come back, teenagers in love. Hey, put it. I dreamed I was in school last night. You think that counts for attendance? Uh, I think so. Was I there too? Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so let's like take the day off. Oh, it's just you. Oh, sorry. So how was your date? Well, he's a great kisser, but it's not like you would know the difference. Did you get felt up? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did. <laughs> From a first crush, to puppy love, to fights with parents, to the awful question looming behind it all, sex. Television and its teenagers have always struggled with the same question. Why must I be a teenager in love? The first look, the first smile, 
that first hint that someone you like likes you. Without knowing why, suddenly everything changes. You're in love. Why must I be a teenager in love? One day I feel so happy, next day I feel so sad. I guess I'll learn to take the good with the bad. Each night I ask the stars above, why must I be a teenager in love? Why must I be a teenager in love? I'm in love. His name is Jordan Catalano. He was left back twice. Once I almost touched his shoulder in the middle of a pop quiz. He's always closing his eyes like it hurts to look at things. Worshipping from afar is no good. You've got to do something about it. You've got to ask. This is Maynard Krebs. I've admired you from a long time from afar. Would you like to meet me for like a soda in the malt shop tonight? No kidding, would you? See how easy it was? That was the father. He went to call her. I... Hey, babe. This is Bud Bundy. You might remember me as the guy in the cafeteria with straws up my nose. Anyway. I was just thumbing through my phone book, starting with the Ys, of course. And good news, I'm free tonight. Hello? <laughs> Hello? So, um, you know that girl, Pam Troy? The one with the really bad perm? No, the one with the diamond set in her nose. So I was thinking of asking her to the dance. What? Well, I know you think the dance is really stupid. Why don't you ask him? Shut up. Well, isn't that who you really want to go with? Shh. Well, isn't it? Well, yeah, in some imaginary universe that exists, like, in my mind, but... Leave it to me. Uh, I don't think I've had a chance to mention that I... I really think you're pretty gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you'd like to go to the spring dance with me. In your car? Definitely. Sorry, I don't do vets. You want to go with me to the dance? Yeah. Cool. Huh? said yes. What happened to the warrior? Why did you say yes? I don't know, man. She asked me. Let's do it. You're over the first hurdle. You've got a date. Now you've got to get ready for it. Three basic knots. You've got your Windsor, but they get way too fat. Same for your half Windsor. What I'm doing here is a four in hand, slim and trim. Ah, watch the moves. Um, Mr. Griffin. Yeah. How will I know if it's okay to kiss her? You know, I'm gonna drop little clues. Look, <laughs> I'm 34 and I'm still missing them. <laughs> so is this? Um, like a date? Dad! It's... They're not... People just hang out. They're not... It's not dates. They're just people. Together. In a bunch. Hmm. So is there someone else there? You like? It's so strange how parents can, out of nowhere, turn psychic. It's unnerving. It's okay to like someone. But, I mean, boys your age can sometimes... Yeah, I, I know. Can sometimes what? Can sometimes mm, not know how to be what you want them to be. My point is that 
It's really hard to figure out how to be a man. Wow! Is that your new dress for the dance? Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Oh, it's divine. Thanks. First times can be a little scary. It's nice to have well-informed friends to rely on for sound advice. Now, first thing you gotta do is a Vinnie Barbarino look, okay? Your hair, for instance, very casual. It should look like it's being blown by unseen winds. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> yeah, it looks better. First, they turn down the lights, uh -huh. put on my pair by the platters, put arm around back of couch so it's around her. Oh, uh, which arm? Well, that depends on what side of the couch you're sitting on. If you're right-handed, you sit on the left side or vice versa. So you keep your strongest hand free. Right. And uh, I brought this just in case. <laughs> what are you, crazy? It's a brassiere closed by hooks. So? Well, hooks are hard to open. Did you ever take out a girl with hooks? Well. Uh, no, all my girls had, uh, buttons. Buttons? Rich, it's either snaps or hooks. Oh, well, I meant snaps. Well, you better practice just in case. Practice? Yeah. You don't see open sesame and it unhooks. Well, I like it to be romantic. I'm just gonna do it my way, all right? I'm going. Okay. I didn't know I was dealing with Cary Grant. <laughs> Oh, hi, Fonzie. Oh, look what some jerk left on the radiator. Boy, oh boy, there's sure some dodos around here. But after all the anxiety, all the advice, and all the preparations, you're finally ready. There may be one last obstacle, though. Your parents may want to meet your date. Hey, hey! He's really anxious to meet all of you. <laughs> Dad? Come on in, Dad! Uh, do I have to? He seems anxious to meet us. I don't know about you, but I am keeping an open mind about this. It just closed. Nick Moore, I'd like to meet my parents, Elise and Stephen Keaton. Nice to meet you, Nick. It's a pleasure having you here. Hey. <laughs> my brother and sister, Alex and Jennifer. Hey. hey. <laughs> How you doing? We's doing fine, Nick. <laughs> At least I's doing fine. <laughs> I brought you in here <laughs> because there's some things I want to talk to you about that I don't want to get Mrs. Huxtable involved in. What's that? Now, last night, you were in a parked car with my daughter. Yes, sir. OK. Now, let's say this apple is you, <laughs> and this apple is my daughter. Now, how close <laughs> were the two of you in the car? I'm not sure I know what you mean. OK. Were you that close in the car? Yes. Were you closer? Mm-hmm. Were you? <laughs> oh, no way, sir. Uh-uh. No way. No way. No way. Uh-uh. No, sir. Parents may also have more than a few rules to lay down. Right now, I sort of have to go. I have a date. You can't go on a date. It says right here that we don't permit that on a school night. Rule 18. You know what? You're confused about my use of the word date. I have a date to meet with my uh, algebra study group. Oh, well, that sounds OK. All right. But as per the procedure outlined in rules 21 through 26, make sure you sign in when you get back. Yeah, bye. And don't wait up. You know how study groups are. Good for you, Quinn. Study hard. Am I the only one who sees what's going on around here? Eventually, though, 
you make it out of the house, alone together, at last. Did you? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. good, I guess. Well, what about the other stuff? Better than volleyball, and yet not quite as good as hockey. <laughs> but the first kiss is only the first step. When we come back, Teenagers in Love, part two, sex. Corey, we're studying. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> America's Teenagers, growing up on television, will continue in a moment here on ABC. Russell and Heather, I hear they did it. Really? I heard it too. They, they did, did it. it. Definitely. As far as television is concerned, the idea of teenagers having sex is a relatively new one. But both they and their parents have been talking about it since the beginning. Sex? <laughs> hey, you know, television's gonna revolutionize sex. Yeah? It's a great way to get chicks. You invite them over for a little television, turn the lights down low, and then grab them right in the middle of Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. Dylan! Woo! Just hurry down! Do it? Right here in a parking lot? Don't you think it's time we went a little further? Oh, no, not not right this second. God, <laughs> I'm wearing totally yucky underwear. Um, breast spray. Breast spray. Protection. Protection. But doesn't all that stuff, like, kill the mood? Not as much as a screaming baby with a loaded diaper. <laughs> they teach sex in school now. They do. <laughs> hey, I'm going back for my extra credit. <laughs> What do you think Mrs. Garrett's going to teach her a sex education class? I don't know, but this is the first time I'm looking forward to homework. <laughs> you just can't hold back an inquiring mind. Teenagers want to know. And what better way to learn than instruction by a qualified professional? The female reproductive organs look like this. <gasps> oh, right. Uh... Why don't you drop a whole lady? So we know where everything goes. Yeah, the whole lady. All right. The academic approach may not always be the most satisfying answer. That's where parents come in. Now, son, as you probably know, there are two sexes. Boy, do I know it. Knock that off, mister. This is serious. Yes, sir. Now, uh, how do I begin? Should we start with birds? Birds? <laughs> We've never really talked about sex, and I think we should have that discussion now. All right, go ahead. Well, if you were to, like, you know, do it now, I mean, sure, you'd have some pleasure, but... <laughs> 
it would be like a lot better. What you're you know, trying if you're... to say is that we're far too young to go all the way. Well, both your body and your mind have to reach a certain sort of maturity. Yeah. And you don't want to regret it later. And, and hey, you have to love the guy. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> you would like to make sure that that you respect him, or it's meaningless, or you know, and that, that he, he respects he, you. He respects you, right? right. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful thing. Right. Well, then. Well, I guess I feel really good about our little chat here. <laughs> Do you guys feel good about it? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> well, well, that's great, then. All right, that's great. Okay, well, good night, girls. Good night, Mom. I love you, Mom. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Night. Night. How lame! <laughs> when all else fails, you can always turn to friends. There's this dividing line between girls who've had sex and girls who haven't. And all of a sudden, we both realized that we were looking at each other across it. Look, you're allowed to ask me things. What things? So did you use something? Angela, of course we did. We used condoms. You have to. Promise me you'll make him wear a condom if you decide to do it. OK. Let's stop talking about it. So how did you, like, decide to, I mean, look. I told Kyle I wanted to wait until I was ready. And then <laughs> one night, I. Totally was. This kind of open attitude towards teenage sex is relatively new in television. In its first few decades, the subject of teenage sex was as taboo as it was in society. Boys might try, but good girls said no. And meant it. Write this down, Rich. There's two kind of girls. Those you marry, and those that got a reputation. In the 50s, that put a lot of pressure on high school couples to marry young. It was the only legitimate way to have sex. Well, I had to tell him we were married. He wouldn't have given us a room if I hadn't. Well, we were so tired sitting up all night on the train, we had to stop. But we're not married. But we're going to be, aren't we? We decided on that. But we're not right now, and that man knew it. He knew you were lying to him. Well, all right, he knew, but he didn't care. Well, I did. He was staring at me awful. He even smiled at me. Well, he was just trying to be friendly. I don't want him to be. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Go find a minister right now? Shh, don't okay, try. I will. I'll go get the minister. Right this way, folks. Late 60s television showed teens who were eager to experiment with the new freedoms of the sexual revolution. <laughs> hey, it's not bad. <laughs> What is it? See, I told you. The physical aspect is just one part of our whole beautiful relationship. And it's not the most important one either. Oh, not at all. I mean, I'd put it maybe sixth. Maybe fifth. By the 80s, television was reflecting a changed society and an acceptance that teenagers were going to be having sex and having it a lot younger than any generation before them. You know, the average age for teenagers to have sex is 16.2 for females and 15.7 for males. Harris poll, they're, they're usually pretty accurate. So I guess the, this is the next natural step. Yeah, totally natural. You know, my parents are going to a medical banquet on Friday. They'll be gone for hours. Friday's good. I'm free. <laughs> this is going to be so great. Yeah, really. Today's television reflects a teenage world where the pressure about sex comes early. And it's just as confusing as it ever was. Should you or shouldn't you? So you a virgin or not? Possum. I won't get crazy, I promise. I just really want to know, that's all. No problem. I'm not a virgin. Oh. So, um, exactly how many women have you had sex with? 
No offense, Blossom, but that's none of your business. Well, of course it is. I mean, I think I have every right to know your sexual history because we're planning to have sex together. Someday. <laughs> Maybe. <sighs> okay, fine. Until that time, it's none of your business. Well, what if I told you I wanted to have sex right now? Do you? Maybe. Prove it. I'd be happy to as soon as you tell me how many women you've slept with. <laughs> this is the whole reason I didn't want to start this in the first place. Why? Because you knew you wouldn't get sex? You'd just be wasting your time? Because you don't get it, okay? You're supposed to. It's accepted. It's what you're supposed to do. Unless you're, like, abnormal. Parents don't have an easy time of it while all this is going on. But some, like Roseanne, manage to remain calm under fire. Well, Mark and I are getting along really good now. And I know you guys aren't crazy about him. But you gotta admit, he's, he's trying really hard. <laughs> okay. Well, I, w I was thinking, you know, um, j just in case we decide to, um, th that it's time f for me to um, get some birth control. Great, Roseanne. <laughs> Becky has such a wonderful, progressive, open-minded mom that she can talk to about that. <laughs> uh huh. Well, I was gonna go to a clinic, um, but Jackie thought that maybe I should go and see your. Gynecologist. Uh-huh. Really? So this is okay with you? Uh-huh. You're kidding. I can't believe how great you're being. I'm so glad Jackie made me tell you. Roseanne, I thought that we should uh, take her. Oh, sure! <laughs> sure, we'll take her. <laughs> At some point, though, all the talk has got to stop. Dylan, this is so beautiful. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. Do you know why I'm so lucky? <laughs> why? How many girls get to have sex for the first time with someone they love? I don't know. I've never really taken an opinion poll. Mm -hmm. Dylan! Woo! Dylan! Oh, put me down! Oh. I'm sorry. I just can't control myself. Well, don't, don't fight it. We are in the room. We certainly are. But while it may be more common now for teenagers to have sex, there are responsibilities and risks that are as difficult to deal with as they ever were. Now. About how long ago do you think you might have contracted this? Uh, about, uh, four weeks ago. And can you be reasonably sure where you picked it up? The other party, your parties? No. Oh, oh, well, yeah, yeah uh, well, I, I mean, if I got it in the, the usual way. If you've got it, you got it in the usual way. Well, then I'm reasonably sure where I got it. Justin, stop. What? Are you angry? You're angry. I, I, I don't get it. You just said that we did this together. Yeah. But we did it to me. And it's in my body, and I'm the one making the decision. Okay, but... And I promise you, you, you don't know what it feels like. You may think you do, but you don't. Right. Tell me how it feels, then. Just go home, Justin. Being here with me doesn't help. And having to explain it to you doesn't help because it's not about you. And it's not about us. It's about me. 
Julia. You don't have to worry. You're gonna be okay. You're you're gonna get over this pretty soon and everything's gonna be back to normal. That's how it is for guys. And no one is gonna look at you later and say, guess what he did once? I'm the one they're gonna look at. I, I'm the one who's gonna carry this around who can't ever get rid of it. So don't try and share this with me. Because you can't. Because it's mine. Young couples have always had to face these kinds of consequences. But what is different for teenagers in the 90s is a frightening new risk that no generation before them has had to grow up with. Why did you do that? Why? I don't know. Jesse, what are you doing? You can't just leave. Watch me. Jesse, wait. I have to know how you feel about me. The world doesn't revolve around you, Becca. I never said it did. What do you want? You want me to kiss you again? Is that what you want? Yes. But I can't. But why? I don't understand. Then just leave it alone. Jesse, what is it? Am I not pretty enough for you? I'm not cool enough? I'm There's not smart enough? There's nothing wrong with you, Becca. Then what? Then nothing. Just go home. Jesse, what are you so afraid of? I am not afraid of anything. Then why are you running away? Look, let's just pretend that this whole day never happened, OK? But why? I don't understand. You're not giving me a reason. Jesse, you're not telling me everything, and that's not fair. Fair? Do you want to hear fair? I'm HIV positive. How's that for fair? What? Becca, I'm going to get AIDS. Once, sex was considered a rite of passage into the world of marriage, family, and adult responsibility. Now it sometimes seems more like the rite of passage into becoming a teenager. The hard part is that the responsibilities that come with it are just as adult as they ever were. But in spite of everything you've already gone through, there's still one more rite of passage you have to face. Graduation. I'm in! I'm going to Princeton! Yeah! When we come back, leaving the teen years behind, graduation day. One more time. I am not taking a college prep course. Actually, I may just skip college and stay home. It'll save me the trouble of moving back in later. Watch the road! Daria, if you don't get into a decent school, your life will be ruined. End of discussion. Way to go, Mom. Ruining your life might be putting it a little strong, but still, the decisions you make as graduation gets closer are definitely big ones. Graduation is a time of excitement and of anxiety. Sometimes, a lot of anxiety. Listen, listen, Mrs. Basson, uh, I'm telling you, I'll make up the work. Come on, I have to graduate. Uh, I'm sorry, but you have no one to blame but yourself. Oh, oh. <laughs> Listen, Miss Basson, I don't think you understand. My mom is flying out from Philly to see me graduate. I mean, the woman that gave me life. And if I don't graduate, she'll take it back. Another one to look forward to, but not this one. This is the last one, the graduation dance. Now, Princess, just because you're graduating. I'd stop that, too, if I could. I'd stop all the clocks. I'd padlock time. How am I going to get through that speech tomorrow? Do you know what valedictory means? It means farewell. Farewell to all the things I love and want. The kids, the fun, the classes, the library, the dates. They'll all be gone forever, dead. I'll never have them again, never. Why do you look like you're about to throw up? I don't know. Ugh, I don't know. I keep reading it and trying to feel great about it, but every time I do, my stomach. Wait. The this is something you want. Really? When did I decide that? When did I weigh my options and say, yes, college? Never. Never. It was always assumed. 
by everyone, my, my family, my teachers, me. It's a time of big decisions. And somehow, all the decisions seem so final. But you've got to make them anyway. Look, I'll go to college, just not this year. But don't you see? College is a chance to get away. Away from your family, away from your home. But I like my family, and I like my home. I don't need to get away like you do. Everybody needs to get away. Look, Dad, I just don't think you understand. I mean, this trip will be good for me. I'll be out on my own. Forget it. Why? You wouldn't survive two seconds on your own. OK. See, I don't know why I asked you anyway. This is my life, and it's my decision. OK? And I'm going to do what I have to do. There comes a time when a person outgrows his parents, and he has to go out into the world and broaden his horizons. I'm leaving in the morning with Deidre and her friends to search for life. I'll see you in August. It's about discovering life. There's a moment when the excitement of the future takes hold. Graduation day is both an arrival and a departure. It's the end of being a teenager and the beginning of the unknown future you'll make for yourself. As we stand on the threshold of life, facing before us the great adventure of the future, our thoughts turn backward with a warm, nostalgic fondness to the four-year journey culminating today with this graduation. The years that we have spent at West Beverly have given us the foundation to face that future. We haven't just learned facts and figures, logic and reasoning skills, but we have learned the value of friendship, loyalty and love, which will not be diminished just because we may not end up together. The memories that we have shared will not go away simply because we do. Let me, let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. Finishing school gives you a sense of accomplishment. Can you dig it? It gives you a sense of thumbs up for the future. I mean, that's why I went back to night school. That's why I stand here tonight before you wearing a dress. <laughs> the world is going to change because it has to change. It can't go on this way. And whether you like it or not, the kids are the ones who are going to change it. generation, remember? Graduation day comes and goes. Suddenly, the world that was so familiar has changed for good. Friends you thought you'd have for life become part of your memories. Puppy loves that may have lasted since grade school suddenly have no place in the new life ahead. Parents who were always there for you now have to step away and watch you disappear down the road to an unknown future. That's the excitement. The rest of it is up to you. Being an adult and everything is just going to be a lot heavier soon than I thought it'd be. Life is so hard. Growing up is so complicated. Yeah. We'll be right back. In the last 50 years, we've seen some serious changes in how teens have been portrayed on television. But we've also seen how many things have remained the same. Adolescence is still that wonderful, impossible time of confusion and joy, hope and enthusiasm, 
discovery and pain. With your parents' help, and sometimes in spite of them too, with your friends, through the confusion of first love, by rebellion, self-discovery, by some strange stumbling process, we make it from being a kid to being an adult. And somehow in the process, we also discover not only who we were, but who we have become. I'm Melissa Joan Hart. Thanks for watching. Next, it's Little League, the American game on Peter Jennings reporting. Next. Your Honor, is it hot in here, or is it just you? Each night we watch Drew try to get a dame, but all the women say... No dice, you're kind of lame. If you are wondering what you're gonna do, well, there ain't no cure like the summertime Drew. I said there ain't no cure like... From the shores of Maine to the California coast, Tomba has captured the hearts of Americans everywhere. Maybe it's the way he swings and climbs, or defeats the evil pigs and man-eating flats. Or maybe it's the way you and Tomba conquer them all. Together, Tomba loves you. And by golly, America loves Tomba. PlayStation. You don't need a license for hair like this. All you need is a little attitude. And Fade Resistant Preference by L'Oreal. Powerful, stay-true colorants that resist fading mean my color won't fade out. Special conditioners mean my hair won't dry out. And just look, rich color, golden color, bright and brand new color, color that won't fade out or dry out. You too can have this color, but only if you live by one simple code. I'm worth it. Fade Resistant Preference by L'Oreal. The other day, I'm driving down Broadway when that pastrami on rye catches up with me. Heartburn, big time. My passenger says, here, take a Zantac 75. I say, what are you, a doctor? And he says, yeah. The medicine in Zantac 75 is the number one doctor-prescribed acid reducer. It relieves even your toughest heartburn, controlling acid for up to 12 hours. <laughs> a real gentleman, that doctor. Zantac 75, the final word in heartburn relief. We get it almost every night. Doing things your way is what Haynes Her Way is all about. Since Armageddon hit, there's been a lot of this going on. Even a little of this. But the one that hits McDonald's this week... ...is the granddaddy of them all. Catch this summer's other blockbuster. A quarter pounder with cheese, a large order of America's favorite fries, and a medium Coke. Think that's big? Supersize your fries and drink and grab a beefy double quarter pounder with cheese. Where can you get a meal with its own gravitational pull? Did somebody say McDonald's? I have a dream. Finally, there's something new to watch. From the director of Men in Black. I got fever, big. A new show so hot, we had to put it on in the summer. Make you weak in the knees. Bo Bridges is Maximum Bob, premiering Tuesday on ABC. The judge has left the building. I got a story. My brother knew these guys were going to a dance. So on their way, their car breaks down. That's when they see this beautiful girl. Can you give me a ride to the dance? Uh, yeah. It's cold, so she asks to borrow one of their shirts. And the next day, they try to get it back. They go to the same spot they met her. Boy! Hello. Your daughter borrowed my shirt last... It's been my daughter. She died 20 years ago. It's a true story. <laughs> now, at Kmart. You remember that. That foul ball. <laughs> yeah, you were 12, a hot dog in each hand. I reached up and snatched that ball right out of the sky. Now, this time, the hot dogs are on me. Uh, I wish I could. Oh, but, Dad, you can. Take this Pepsi AC before you eat. Heartburn stops before it starts. Before I eat? Yep. 
You get us the hot dogs, and I'll get us another foul ball. <laughs> you can be heartburn free with Pepsi AC. For cleaning, shining, and disinfecting. Clean and shine, shine and clean. Nothing outperforms us in the bathroom. Scrubbing Bubbles Bathroom Cleaner. We work hard so you don't have to. My favorite film? Well, as a student filmmaker, I naturally gravitate towards the classics. Like what? Oh, well, there's so many. Uh, you know the one with the, uh, the guy and the mother, and they're on the thing, and it's, it's raining a lot. Need to get reacquainted with the classics? Try this. If it's not a new release, it's a blockbuster favorite. Choose from thousands of titles and keep them for five evenings. I love films with a lot of rain in them. Yeah. What's flowing in some tap water may make it taste bad. More importantly, it may be harmful. Fortunately, there's one pitcher that reduces both chemicals and microorganisms. The new Pure Plus Pitcher. Its unique double filter removes microorganisms Brita can't. So you're left with cleaner, healthier, delicious water. Get more out of your water. Get new Pure Plus. Don't have dandruff? That's too bad. Because if you did, Pantene has a new shampoo that turns dandruff problems into healthy, shiny hair. Introducing Pro-V Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. People who do have dandruff will appreciate how Pantene combines a leading dandruff-fighting technology with provitamin conditioning. So if you had itching and flaking, you could take care of it while improving your hair's healthy shine. New Pantene Pro-V Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. Not that you need it. For feminine itching, I want more than fast relief. I want to protect that delicate skin. Now, improved Vagisil cream has two medicines to stop itching fast, protect delicate skin. Vagisil is what I needed. Vagisil stops itch fast, protects delicate skin. Crackhead. Drug dealer. Street hustler. Gang member. All kicked out of the community with the help of kids. Like me. Me. Us. You can make a difference. We have the power to help prevent crime. Call 1-800-722-TEENS to find out what you can do in your community. It's time we're judged by what we do, not how we look. You can learn a lot about America by watching Little League, Dreams, Innocence, and Growing Up. Peter Jennings, The American Game, next. In a summer of reruns, here's something brand new. The hits keep on coming. It's so new, they don't even know what they're going to do. I'd like to take you out for a few drinks, but I'm a minor. Come on, I'm horny. Whose line is it anyway with Drew Carey premiering Wednesday? I am predicting a lot of booty tonight. to use professional hair care products thanks to Tresemme. Professional products without the salon price. You're going to love Tresemme European Natural Shampoo. It's fortified with a blend of 100% natural extracts rich in vitamins A, C, and E. It strengthens and protects hair from everyday damage. Tresemme, Tresemme, ooh la la. Professional, affordable Tresemme. Man, the first time I looked at a picture of me, I was like, wow, wait, what happened? I was fat. I lost over 50 pounds on a slim, fast plant. I finally found something that worked for me. It's easy. It tastes great. Once I lost the weight, my energy skyrocketed right through the roof. It makes you feel good after working out. 23 vitamins and minerals, protein, calcium, fiber, all the balanced nutrition like a healthy meal. I look at life totally different now. Slim fast every day. Balanced nutrition for a healthy life. Anybody can do it if I can do it. Son, your mother and I have to talk to you. It's important. Marijuana. The wacky weed 
it is bad. Of this I know, believe your dad. Remember this, it's your decision. But marijuana can lead to prison. Any way you choose to talk with your kids about drugs is a good way. Call for your free brochure. This summer, don't chill at a block party, because McDonald's is throwing a rock party for the hit movie Armageddon, now in theaters. Join the bash with a big, juicy quarter pounder with cheese extra value meal. Or supersize your fries and drink and land an awesome double quarter pounder with cheese for a blockbuster value. So bring the whole block and drop into the only place throwing a rock party for Armageddon. Did somebody say McDonald's? Here's the verdict. The best of the bunch. It practices good television. This is as good as it gets. The practice moves to Sundays, August 9th on ABC. What is Nicorette? Nicotine replacement gum. It helps you stop smoking cigarettes, but you don't chew it like regular gum. You bite Nicorette until it tingles. Then you hold it between your cheek and your gum. And you get a lower level of nicotine to help you fight your cravings. And as your cravings get fewer and fewer, you use less and less and less Nicorette until you use none. And none is a wonderful number. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Two tickets, $28. Two hot dogs, two popcorns, and two sodas, $18. One autographed baseball, $45. Real conversation with 11-year-old son, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except it all over, even Major League ballparks. And Pat here, the Reynolds Kitchen's home economist, with a delicious meal idea that's quick and easy. Made with one gas, fresh vegetables. Start with Reynolds Wrap heavy duty aluminum foil. Fold it around fresh vegetables, seasonings, and two ice cubes to make a packet that steams in the nutrients and crisp flavor. And now, clean up. So I have time for gardening. Reynolds quick and easy packet cooking makes good food better. Don't even think about it. With all the claims about vacuum filtration, Eureka thought it was time to clear the air. So we filled a sealed chamber with smoke to simulate the unseen dust in your home. The Eureka EnviroVac filters better than any other upright because of its true HEPA seal system. Nothing escapes. Oh, did we mention tools on board? How you can use them instantly or how it comes with 12 powerful amps, the most you can buy? Now the choice is clear. EnviroVac by Eureka. How do you do? I'm Kathleen. Hello, I'm Kathy. I'm also very nervous. Any pain reliever can work on a tension headache. Oh boy, do I have a headache. But Tylenol works without stomach irritation and it doesn't have caffeine. Tylenol is simply the most trusted combination of strength and safety in pain relief today. Wish me luck. Tylenol. Take comfort in our strength. Since Armageddon hit, there's been a lot of this going on. Even a little of this. But the one that hits McDonald's this week... ...is the granddaddy of them all. Catch this summer's other blockbuster. A quarter pounder with cheese, a large order of America's favorite fries, and a medium Coke. Think that's big? Supersize your fries and drink and grab a beefy double quarter pounder with cheese. Where can you get a meal with its own gravitational pull? Did somebody say McDonald's? From the director of Men in Black and Get Shorty. A new series about love, gators, and other things that bite. <laughs> Bo Bridges is Maximum Bob, premiering Tuesday on ABC. It's not that difficult, people. You, the, Lee. See? Hugh Lee. See the G is not silent. Nope, it's loud, like my husband. <laughs> Baby, I'm trying to reach these people. The Hughleys this fall on ABC. Hey, Rita, isn't it about time to change that Glade plug-ins refill? Refill your Glade plug-ins every 45 days to keep your home Glade fresh. Plug it in, plug it in. 
Can your fridge hold all that? It's always a challenge. Well, now's the time to get a bigger one. You can take 10% off all appliances and electronics when you use your Sears card. Sounds great. Even if they're already on sale. So I'll be able to keep lots of crisp green stuff, right? If you hurry, offer ends Saturday. Discovered the event. You was a higher light. Twins. The feeling. I've missed you so much. The trap. You're not trying to set me up with your father. Yes. I'm not mature enough for this. Disney's The Parent Trap. Rated PG. Now playing. can't concentrate. It's over, Rock! Now that it's over, just give me something to drink. There ain't nothing on ice to the Sadie now! Left in fresh guys pay, eh? Except maybe this! Grand Balboa needs a miracle! Yo, that's risk, baby. Get in there! <laughs> Save some of that for a sequel! <laughs> Out here, it's Monday. In here... Tuesday. Friday. Friday. You know. Wednesday. And this is Friday's new Chop House Classics. Serves sizzling hot for a taste that's a classic. The new Chop House Classics at Friday's. Good day. Not a good day. Do you know what day it is? It's the first of the month. It's Jet Dry Day. Give me some Jet Dry. One little bottle a month. <laughs> Look at that. Sparkling, gleaming dishes. Jet Dry Spot and Film Fighter. Your dishwasher was designed for it. This summer, their dreams will become your dreams. I need you to focus. I'm there. You got a fan. From the producer of Party of Five. Are you never going to speak to me again? Push. All new ABC next Thursday. I got this car for me. But if anyone takes notice, that's okay too. Aurora. Defy convention. Right now, get 1.9% financing on the Aurora and all Oldsmobiles. See your Oldsmobile dealer for details. Just because a glass and surface cleaner is blue like Windex, doesn't mean it cleans glass as well as Windex. Because only Windex is specially formulated with ammonia D. It leaves a beautiful, streak-free shine. Just about anyone can appreciate. Windex, the best on glass from S.C. E. Johnson Wax. I got a story. My brother knew these guys were going to a dance. So on their way, their car breaks down. That's when they see this beautiful girl. Can you give me a ride to the dance? Uh, yeah. She's cold, so she asks to borrow one of their shirts. And the next day, they try to get it back. They go to the same spot they met her. Boy! Hello. Your daughter borrowed my shirt last... It's been my daughter. She died 20 years ago. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> now at Kmart. This is my grandpa Giovanni. Nobody tells stories like he does. Give him good food and good people, he'll charm you all night. That's how it was last night at the Olive Garden. Where everything feels more like family, more Italian. Then, I came to seafood Portofino. It was perfect. Italian seafood and wine sauce with scallops and mussels, shrimp and linguine, plus all the salad and breadsticks you want for $9.95. What a feast it was for all of us. And our ears, too. You're beautiful. The Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Morning. A tranquil time to prepare that perfect cereal breakfast. Grains harvested by hand. Milk fresh from the source. All meticulously arranged. You've got to be kidding. Of course. For mornings at your pace, there's new Kellogg's Breakfast Mates with a bowl of your kid's favorite Kellogg's cereal, milk and spoon in one. It's everything you need to make breakfast easier. Kellogg's Breakfast Mates in the refrigerated section. Stepping into the lineup Wednesday. Whose line is it anyway? Hosted by Drew Carey. It's the new summer series with no rules, uh, no structure. Well, you got a table for Elvis? No script and no shortage of laughs. Uh, it's comedy without a net. I think they look very natural. Premiering Wednesday.